G'day guys, Matt here from Not In The Manual. So today I'm going to do an economy test. Um, I've had to come pretty uh, late in the evening just to just so that the traffic has died off. Uh, I've had the new tyres fitted to the car. You can see here now I have done uh, 1,258 kilometres and the economy is 131 watt hours per kilometre. So that's that's pretty good efficiency. So these tires haven't increased the efficiency, um, haven't uh, decreased the efficiency of the car. Uh, it's still super efficient. Uh, been pretty happy with the tires so far. The the these are more of a comfort tire than a performance tire. So I, I've, I'm happy with them because I, I, I like that. Um, the steering isn't as responsive as the Pilot Sports, but I'm going to do a separate review. On these tires and go through the features and explain a few things so I'll leave that separate but I've been pretty happy with them so far so what I'm going to do is is reset that um, reset that trip so I might rename it um, we'll just call it economy test Okay, so it's not E-Primus anymore, but uh, we'll click on here, go down the bottom and reset economy trip. Uh, so that's that's reset there, so we're zero. What we're going to do is drive out roughly 25 kilometres and come back. And uh, I have the aero wheel caps on at the moment. And then what we're going to do, uh, this economy test is going to be testing two things. It's going to be looking at these tyres. How they run standard with the aero caps and then we're going to fit the induction wheel covers and and have a look at what sort of a difference they make to the economy if anything so um, we've reset that um, we're going to drive out along the m2 motorway it's it's reasonably flat um, it's not a windy day at all so it's going to be a reasonably fair test now it's not going to be a super scientific test but uh, you know we're doing it all at the same time so it's going to be reasonably fair and um, you know really you just want to be doing these tests in normal driving conditions so this is going to be pretty normal driving conditions I just wanted to be able to keep a reasonably constant speed and that was the main thing and not have wet roads or super windy conditions so yeah looking pretty good for it so uh, let's get out and, and um, start doing the drive all right, a little busier than I thought here, but um, my battery's at 34 degrees, uh, ambient temperature's 24 degrees, uh, the rear motor's at 41 degrees, so everything's pretty stable, so I know that's not going to factor into the economy. Um, just set the, the speed to the, the current speed, uh, speed limit, which is 100 kilometres an hour. So most of this test will be done at 100 kilometers an hour. And I should be able to keep that, that as a pretty consistent speed throughout this test. Uh, let's do an auto lane change, see how it goes. Got past these slow cars. This would be a good chance to test out the autopilot if there's any improvements with this latest update, 2023.2.10. Um, we'll see how we go usual way you got overtaken the cars speed up this is where auto lane change you can see here it um, disconnected the steering so it is a bad time of the day with the uh, with the twilight here it goes it's doing the auto lane change now so yeah auto lane change not much much better um, it struggles with these roads here where I don't know if you can see it when the camera, whether it's getting the contrast right or not, but they patch up cracks in the road with this uh, flexible sort of rubber sealant. And at night, or if there's light coming in at a certain angle, uh, those lines light up. And I think cars with uh, navigation safety systems with cameras really, really struggle to, uh, to see the lines. And with, with auto lane change, it will only change over broken lines so if there's a darker line or uh, these these repaired sections here that light up it thinks the line is unbroken and it's not going to cross an unbroken line 
And I think that's sometimes where your auto lane change doesn't work. It's because of the poor markings on the road. So uh, I think, you know, we can see, that, see it okay, but I think the cameras really struggle. You can see that here now. Um, the car is, is a little bit wobbly in these sections. It's uh, very difficult for the car to work out which one is the lane marking and which one is a repaired section of the road. It's a great sunset here today. <laughs> I don't think it does much for the cameras. We'll see how um, I've got my GoPro Hero 10 and my Insta360 going here um, today, different angles. Um, yeah, quite nice driving into the sunset. Uh, you can hear those little repair markings on the road are quite noisy as well. So that's not these tyres. Um, you can see this road is pretty horrible. And in the wet and at night, it's almost impossible for the car to try and see the lane markings here on this road. So I think we're going to have to get a lot better with our roads if um, we're going to have safer cars with their uh, guidance systems. Been pretty happy with the noise level of these tyres compared to the Pilot Sports. They are possibly slightly noisier but um, at high speed, but at low speed I think they're quieter and they're actually a bit more comfortable. So I don't think the sidewalls are as stiff in these tyres as what they are in the Pilot Sports. So the noise levels in here aren't too bad. I'll probably do a separate noise, uh, noise test. I didn't bring the sound meter with me today and I'm not really set up for that. So today's really just the economy test. So we're just passing the exit I was planning on taking to Seven Hills, but I'm not, not even at 20 kilometers yet. I might just push it to the 25 Ks or roughly 25 Ks so that we're doing a 50 kilometer round trip um, that makes it a bit more fair for the, uh, the economy test. And um, yeah, I think 50 was quite a good thing. It's, it's where the energy app looks back to 50, the last 50 kilometers. Um, I think it's quite a, good, quite a good distance to do an economy test. Okay, I think we'll just take this exit here. Um, 23 kilometers and three kilowatt hours and so far here at the halfway point we're 124 watt hours per kilometer so uh, we're here at the sunny holt road exit um it's quite going to be close enough to the the amount of kilometers i want to do um what we might do is go down here further and then turn around Okay, swinging around for the uh, return journey now, getting back onto the motorway. This is the M7 motorway. Uh, it eventually becomes the M2 motorway, and this takes you right into the city if you, if you want. And if you go back that way, it takes you down to Canberra if you keep going along. So it's quite a big arterial road through Sydney. So yeah, 25K turnaround, it worked out okay once uh, I went up and turned around and got back onto the freeway. So we were uh, 100 and uh, 125 watt hours per kilometer just accelerating onto the freeway here we've seen it's jumped up to 130 watt hours per kilometer so we'll get autopilot going again and get it set to 100 and um, just cruise back to the start point so you navigate on autopilot can get pretty annoying sometimes you can see here it's telling me to change lanes to follow route but I don't need to there's no there's no need to get into that lane there's no exit there's no merge there's no anything but it's telling me get across. So if that's ever really annoying you, you can just turn off navigate on autopilot there and it goes back to reverts to standard autopilot. So you can just click that again if you wanna go back to navigate on autopilot, pretty easy to do. So if the suggested lane changes are really annoying you, uh, speed based, you can see this one's telling me to follow route, get in that lane again. So it's not a speed based lane change suggestion. So I'm just going to turn it off because that's annoying me and I'll just go to standard autopilot, which is pretty good anyway. Okay, so we finished the second leg of the, the first half of the journey. So... We have 49 kilometers, we used six kilowatt hours, 
Now it says 122 watt hours per kilometer, but as I took the exit and I was regening, uh, when I took the exit, it dropped from 126 watt hours per kilometer down to 120 and it's now jumped back up to 122. Let's just take it as, you know, what it was before I took the exit and that was 126 watt hours per kilometer. I'm now going to put the induction wheel covers on and, and do that uh, test again, repeat it again and see how we go with the induction wheel covers. Okay, I've now got the induction wheel covers fitted. We'll reset the economy test and go and um, repeat. So my main concern with the induction wheel covers I bought was just the large ridge on the ends, uh, right on, out on the outer edge of the, the wheel cover. I'm a bit concerned about how aerodynamic that is. Um, and also what you don't know is the, the sort of fan shape to the induction wheel covers. You know, have they got the angles and things right there? Uh, is it going to create a lot more turbulence? Uh, that's, that's the unknowns. Okay, we're at the turnaround point. So, um, what are we looking at? 134 watt hours per kilometer. It was actually 144 just before we took the exit there and, and did a big long regen there. So, um, yeah, it's looking like it could have been slightly more uh, consumption, slightly, slightly higher consumption, but it's not a massive difference. back onto the motorway again for the last leg of the journey uh, once we get to the end there I will pull up and park the car and uh, give you a report on how it went okay so we're at the exit um, the end of the second leg uh, so economy is 133 watt hours per kilometer so slightly more I was at 126 watt hours per kilometer with the standard aero wheel caps so slightly more um, I'll have a look at it a bit more detail I will we'll have a look at it in Teslafy and I'll compare the two trips and and just look at the overall economy all right guys we're just here in here in Teslafy so this uh, this is a website that logs data from my car. I give it permission to uh, take trip data from my car and uh, a couple of other little data points. Um, I don't allow it to control my car. You, you have a say over that when you set it up initially, but um, it's, it logs my trips. And this is quite good to, to look back on trips to different places and, and see what, what differences were. Uh, in, in these trips and for me doing these videos I think it's it's quite good to to go back and have a look at these these trips and look at the data if if something happened on the on the journey and I, I wasn't taking note of things so it's quite good so we can see here we have the the two the two round trips so this top one here was with the aero wheel caps the standard Tesla ones and this second one here was with the turbine wheel covers that I bought from Tesseries so, and I, I did uh, my previous video, you'll see I, I did a review on that and uh, we we fitted, fitted those, showed you how to fit those, those wheel covers. So looking here, I think it was a reasonably fair test. It was the same amount of time. The kilometers are slightly different uh, between the two and that was just purely uh, one of the turnaround points I, I had to take a little detour to do a u-turn from the other one so it's a kilometer different a little bit over one kilometer difference not a huge deal and it's actually in the mo more of it's giving the uh, aero wheel caps a tiny tiny minute little handicap um, but overall uh, the efficiency was fantastic with the aero wheel caps 123 watt hours per kilometer and you can see here, I mean, it was a 100 kilometer hour zone, but it was an average speed of 83 kilometers per hour. So what that's doing is factoring in the, the, um, 
the extra little uh, slower speeds I was doing at each end. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's getting a bit, of the, a bit of that lower speed in there. But what the, the main aim of this test was to compare the, the aero wheel caps with the turbine wheel caps. So the majority of this was at the higher speeds and of 100 kilometers an hour and along the motorway. And you can see here uh, 6.05 kilowatt hours used for the aero wheel caps, 123 watt hours per kilometer as opposed to the 6.43 kilowatt hours and 134 watt hours per kilometer for the turbine wheel covers. Um, very, very close there, not a dramatic difference. So I wouldn't be overly concerned with the efficiency of the car with these turbine wheel covers. I was initially concerned about the, the hard edges on the outside diameter of the wheel cover. Um, uh, yeah, just a little bit concerned about that not being a nice smooth curved surface, but it doesn't appear to have made much of a difference here. But you can see there is a difference and over a much longer trip, uh, longer than you know 48 kilometers uh, that will compound um, I wouldn't be too concerned about leaving these on for a long trip you know with a long trip as long as you've got uh, enough enough capacity or enough range in your battery to get you from one fast charger to the next with a safety margin on top of sort of 15 you know 20 percent so um, yeah that's pretty good and that was the main point of this um, Obviously these are ideal conditions as well. You're not going to get this in the middle of winter somewhere in Europe or North America. Um, this is, you know, ideal temperatures. The battery was nice and warm. Everything was stabilized. Um, the AC, the HVAC wasn't having to work too hard. And, um, you know, look at the outside temperatures, 23.4, 22.8, uh, ideal, ideal. Not much wind at all. Uh, so perfect conditions, I couldn't have asked for better conditions to run an efficiency test. So not much of an outside influence on that at all and, and very similar results with the two trips. So all pretty good, pretty successful. So um, I guess I've proved here that um, you don't need to worry too much about when you fit these accessories. It's not going to affect your economy dramatically. So I hope you got something out of this video. I, um, it, it really just shows how efficient these cars really are. and. You can see here with the aero wheel caps, what I also wanted to do was test the, the new Michelin E-Primacy tyres that I have. Overall, my, my economy over the uh, 26,000 kilometres or whatever the car has done now um, was at 144 watt hours per kilometre before I fitted the Michelin E-Primacy tyres and that has been on the decrease. So overall, these tyres are actually more efficient than the original uh, Michelin Pilot Sport uh, Tesla tyres that were fitted to the car. And my driving style has stayed the same and I, th I think that's quite a good, you know, it's heading in the right direction anyway. So those tyres are, are seem to live up to their, to uh, the, 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 the advertising and the, and the promises of the features and, and being efficient. Um, they are a comfort tyre though, I, I, um, so yeah, comfort over, over performance, but I've been super happy with those tyres. So this, this was an efficiency test for those as well. So I'll be doing a separate review on the Michelin E-Primacy tyres and I, I will include this and possibly do another efficiency test separate for those as well just to verify this. But yeah, guys, that, that's, uh, that's it. Hopefully you got something out of this and I will catch you next video.